Well, guys, this is Technoli. This is your new computer. This is it. This is it? What is that? That is a Nook 8. Do you see how small that thing is? That's crazy. Here's my mouse. Look at that. Look at that. It's tiny, guys. It is tiny. Here, you want another comparison? How about a hard drive, a SATA hard drive? Is that little enough for you? Well, there it is, guys. The Nook 8 running Catalina. This is all you'd have to have on your desk. That little guy, that monitor, keyboard, and mouse. So here it is. Let me show you what it has. It has two high-speed, one's a charger port, high-speed USB connections. This is the on-off button right here. It's got a little vent over here for fan. Nice big vent back here. We've got our little power cord that comes with it. HDMI, our LAN, two more USBs, and a USB-C. That's it. In this little tiny box. Oh, I almost forgot. How about a little SD reader right there too? So Nook 8, brand new, $449 for the box with the CPU. Then I paid $65 for 16 gigabytes of RAM and $45 for an NVMe 250 gigabyte. So we're in for 560 bucks running Catalina and it runs amazing. Now, let me show you the inside of this. It's really cool. Hey guys, I'll try to do this so you can see what I'm doing. I only tightened up two screws. So it's got four screws on the bottom. And there it is. So this is your NVMe down here. You've got, I've got my two uh, chips here. And then look here. You can put another SATA drive right inside here. So just drop it down in there and you've got two hard drives. How's that? All in this tiny little box. Amazing stuff. So let's get into this one, guys. Okay, guys, I hope everyone is feeling good. I hope you don't have this crazy bug that's going around. I've been fine. I hope everybody else has been fine. We have passed 5,000 subscribers. So thank you again. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And today we do have this little Nook. This is a Nook i5. And I got it off of uh, Amazon. Be in the description below. I stuck 16 gigabytes of RAM in it. And a little uh, NVMe 250 gigabyte hard drive. And got it running on the Hackintosh. This was not the easiest thing in the world to do, but we got it working. Sleep does work. The USB-C works. All the ports work. There's not that many on it anyways. But um, nice little, nice little, uh, nice little computer. I can't believe how small it is. But anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to show you this on Clover. Yes, I haven't given up on Clover and I won't give up on Clover. Um, this was not going to be the easiest thing to do on OpenCore. And um, so many people had requested I do a, a video on the, the Nook 8 or a Nook period. And uh, Clover just worked out to be the best deal on this. So let's get started on this. Now, we're going to start with building a uh, vanilla USB drive. And you guys, we probably all forgot how to do this on a regular Mac for Clover, but we're going to get started on it. Let's go ahead and put in a USB flash drive in there. 
Now you're on a Mac right now, I'm assuming, and you have the install Mac OS Catalina in your Applications folder, okay? If you don't have it in there, you're not going to be able to use this method to build your vanilla USB. So uh, I'm going to assume that you do have it in there. If you don't, you have to download it. If you're on uh, your cousin's uh, MacBook or whatever and they're running High Sierra, just download it from Apple. Get it down into your Applications folder so you can make this USB. So what we'll do is we'll just go here to Utilities, Disk Utility, and we're going to format our USB right here. So uh, go ahead and show all devices and then click on your USB drive, click Erase, and let's just name it USB. And we're going to leave this Mac OS Extended and GUID Partition Map and click Erase. Okay, done really quick. So now we have to go over to the internet and we're going to go to this uh, Apple website and get a command to make a USB bootable for Mac. Okay, right here. And we need this text. So we're just from here over to the forward slash right before my volume. And just copy that and go ahead and close this down for now. Let's go over here to Spotlight and type in Terminal because we got to go into Terminal mode to do this. So we'll right click, paste, and then we're going to add USB because that's what we named our USB thumb drive, right? Hit enter, put in your password, and say yes and hit enter. This will take about 20 minutes to make our uh, vanilla USB. And as soon as it's done, we'll come back and get started with Clover. Okay guys, so it's all done formatting and now we have our cute little USB here, install Mac OS Catalina. And on my website, you're gonna have this uh, package right here, this Clover app that needs to be installed. This is new for Clover. This is their newest version. So it's actually an install. So you just click continue install, put in your password, and just let the whole program install. It's a real small little program. Okay, now it's going to put a little four-leaf clover up here. Isn't that cute? So now what you want to do is uh, first go to Clover Configurator, and I want you to mount your USB EFI partition. Okay, all right, so there it is. Now we can see it. I'll just close this for right now. All right, so we're going to Clover, and we're going to install Clover. And go ahead and select right here. It says select a disk. Just click the down arrow and go to your EFI folder on your USB stick. Okay, there's mine. And then go over here to BIOS and click the first one. This is for UEFI versions. And it's going to select most of our programs or files that we need. But we need to add this memory fix right here, Optio memory fix, and we need to go down a little further and let's grab partition dex and we also need this EMU variable. Okay? And then these man are these are mandatory and they'll already be selected and then APS driver loader dot E F I and choose install password okay all done with that so let's go back into clover now clover configurator this is a different clover and mount EFI mount the USB stick again okay double click double click on EFI clover and right click and open with Clover Configurator. All right, now we need to do a few things here. So I want you to go down here. Everything in here is fine. These are already disabled, so we can just uh, ignore those. I want you to go down here, List of Patches, and click that up and down arrow, and we're going to select this EHC1. 
we're going to select EHC2. And we need to grab, let's see, where is it? HDAS, okay? And let's see, that's good for that. But we have to add one manually. So click the little plus button and we're going to name it boot fix, boot fix. If you don't do this, you're going to have errors. And in the uh, files that you're going to download, you're going to have this little text folder and it's going to have these numbers that you need to copy and paste this one in the first one. Just paste it in there and then double click and then grab this one. Just copy and paste it in here. All right, so we're done with that. Now I want you to uncheck all of these boxes, all these ones that say that are blue. Okay, uncheck those. Uncheck these. Check plugin type down here. And then I want you to go over here to this one and uncheck all of these boxes. All right, get down to it. There we go. Okay, now uh, let us go over to boot, the boot folder, and right click, and we're going to select minus V for verbose mode. We're going to select, uh, let's see, dart equals zero, and we're going to right click and grab debug, and right click and grab keep sum equals one. Okay, now everything else here is fine. I want you to go ahead and highlight this uh, XMP detection equals yes. And let's see here. So we'll go on down here. These are fine. This is fine. Devices is fine. All of these are fine. Go ahead and change your resolution. If you've got a good monitor, a higher end monitor, you could go ahead and change this to if it'll, if it'll uh, show 1080, you can go ahead and change it to 1920 by 1080. But if you have problems and it doesn't boot, then change it down to a lower resolution. But mine will support that. And then graphics, we're okay. Nothing, nothing. Right here, we need to go to this up and down arrow. And let's select the Mac Mini right there, Mac Mini 8.1. All right, guys? And then go down here and save. All right, now let's go over here to our Kext installer. We have to install some Kext. And we wanna go over here and choose the other folder, which if you look in the EFI hidden partition inside the folders under Clover, then you've got the kext, and then you've got this other folder, and right now it's empty. So we're going to go ahead and fill it up with some kext that we need. So we need Lilu, Virtual SMC, Whatever Green, Apple ALC, and for this one we just want to scroll down, grab USB Inject All, and Intel Mousy Ethernet Driver. Click Download. And see there. Going right into there, just click install to finish. Okay, so now we just have one more thing to do. In the folders that you downloaded, you're going to have a little folder called Kext. We need to add these two little guys. This is for the audio to work on HDMI because that is the only audio I can get to work on this computer. I've tried everything. I've looked at other posts and other people have the same problem. The only audio we can get is through the HDMI connector. So that's all we have. We've got uh, the ACPI right here. Now I've got some patched files that you need to put in here. And they're also going to be in a folder. Grab these, these two, and put them into your patched folder under your ACPI, right here, patch folder, right there. 
These are thanks to Gib, GibHub. Uh, they had these SSDTs for us, so we wouldn't have to build them. Um, I did have to build this AWAC, but this EC was thanks to them. Okay, so now we are done and we can go into the BIOS and set this thing up to boot. Okay guys, on these little nooks, you just press the F2 key to get into the BIOS. Start tapping that thing. Okay, here we go. So when it first comes up like this, just let's go ahead and make sure that UEFI mode is checked and also make sure legacy is checked. And then we'll go over here to advanced. Um, everything in main is fine. Devices, uh, we want to make sure everything is just like you see it. All the USB ports are enabled. USB legacy is checked. We'll go over to SATA and everything here is checked and ACH, AHCI is checked, of course. And the video configuration is fine, just like this, 64, 256 meg and auto. Onboard devices, everything is on except enhance consumer IR. And then right here we have disabled these TV items. Cooling, nothing. Performance, nothing. Security, uh, everything in here is fine by default. Uh, let's see, yeah. Power, we can leave it by default. And boot, we are right back to the legacy and UEFI. Configuration, we've got fast boot off. Boot USB devices first. I don't have that checked, I just select it. And then right here, you just wanna make sure everything is set up just as you see it, just to be safe. And then secure boot, of course we do not have it checked and everything else is fine. All right, so we can go out of here and then it's gonna ask you to save and we want to. Let's put your memory stick in one of the USB ports and select yes. And I'm going to press the F10 key. The F10 key is how you get into the boot menu. And because I've already got an OS on this hard drive, I'm gonna select my USB stick. If you were starting fresh, of course, you wouldn't have to worry about that. But I'm gonna go down here to my USB and hit enter. And this is Clover. So it's gonna be different than open core. What we wanna do is just select over here on the left is our boot Mac OS install from install Mac OS Catalina, which is our USB. Hit enter. We'll go through a lot of text, guys. If you've watched my other videos, you know all about this. It'll get stuck on a couple of lines. I'm not gonna run the whole video here and have you see it. Um, it's not too bad, not too bad at all to get to that first screen, but uh, it will get stuck on a couple of lines. Just let it pass. It only sticks for a few seconds. And uh, when it comes up to the format window, we'll come back. There we go. And we'll get up here and get to the format, get that hard drive formatted. All right, guys. So we'll just go over here to Disk Utility, click Continue. We're going to go here and select Show All Devices. And right here is my hard drive. Click Erase. You can call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call mine my Nook 8. And um, I'm gonna select APFS GUID Partition Map. Click Erase. It's pretty quick going through this. Okay, we're all done. Just go out of here and click Install Mac OS. Continue. Agree. Agree. There's our hard drive. And click Install. And this goes pretty quick because, you know, 
all of the files for the OS are on your thumb drive, so it's not pulling from the internet. And right here it says about four minutes remaining, and that is approximately it. It'll get down here, it'll reboot on its own. We're going to leave our memory stick in there because we need to boot from it a few more times. And uh, we'll come right back. Okay, about two minutes remaining. Let's see. I don't think it'll last long here. There it goes. Yeah, once it gets to two minutes remaining, it's pretty much done. I'm going to reboot. You don't have to press anything. Just let it come back up to the boot menu. Because now we're going to boot from the hard drive. Okay, we'll go over here, boot Mac OS install from Nook 8, which is my hard drive. It's a little sticky on a couple lines, but uh, not bad at all. It's running on the hard drive now, so it's pretty quick. All right, here we go. Well, I like that. Okay, now um, it says about 12 minutes remaining. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, so it gets up to about 12 minutes remaining and then it does another reboot. So we'll just do it again. This is all normal stuff. Just rebooting. We don't need to uh, press anything until we get to the boot menu. Okay, so we want to move off of that and go right over to the hard drive again and hit enter. All right, so it'll get up here and it will pretty much go completely across. And uh, it has to, uh, of course, finish its install. So when it gets done, we'll come back. Okay, guys, we're going pretty quick here. Four minutes remaining. You know, for $560 for this, that is uh, truly amazing, really, when you think about it. So, way less money, uh, it's smaller, and it's very easily upgradable, and you know, you can put two hard drives in it because you've got the uh, NVMe, and you've got room in, the, in this one for a SATA, a two and a half inch SATA. So you can have two drives in this thing. All right, so now we're done, and it's going to automatically reboot in three seconds. So we'll just wait for it. All right, so leave your memory stick in there. We still got to come up again. So we need it in there to boot. Don't need to press anything. Just need to get to that menu again and select our hard drive. All right, there we go. Hit enter. Okay, so we're going to get up here to our final screen where we can get booted into this little puppy dog. All right, let's select our country. Let's go. Continue, 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 continue. I do have my Ethernet cable attached. No, the Wi-Fi will not work on this. You'll have to get a little uh, thumb drive if you need Wi-Fi. There's that little, uh, I think it's 12 bucks on Amazon that uh, I've showed you guys before. Let me know if you need it. Okay. So I'm just going to name it whatever I want, put in a password, okay, click continue. All 
and we'll set location services, turn off analytics, set screen time up later, enable Siri, and we'll choose dark mode. It even looks like an iMac or a Mac Mini. I'm sorry. All right, let's uh, tell it what kind of keyboard we have. There we go. There it is. Transparent bar at the bottom. Let's go over here to about this Mac. And we will see here that it is showing up as an i5 with 16 gigabytes of RAM. And it has the Intel iris plus graphics 655 and that is the correct amount of ram that it would show okay and we'll just go over here to the internet real quick and click on google let's go to youtube all right and i can only think of one place to go on youtube and that's technoli <laughs> So there we go. What I want to do is, because you guys have been driving me crazy, I want to give you what you want. I've got on my thumb drive here, another thumb drive. I'm going to stick it in the computer. I've got uh, Clover Configurator. So I'm going to drag that out on my desktop. And I'm also going to drag out here, which I'm going to give you these uh, serial number generator right here. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to change your serial numbers so you can get iMessage and all the wonderful things to work and turn off the verbose mode so you don't have to look at that text when it boots up. So let's go into Clover. Let's right click and open and then click on open all right so let's go over to mount efi and we're going to mount the um, thumb drive put in our password all right now we have the efi folder which is right here and we need to copy the efi folder to our hard drive so this is my hard drive i'm going to mount the partition put in my password and click open all right so if you look here there's no clover folder or anything in here so this is on our hidden partition our efi hidden partition on the hard drive and here is the usb we just used to boot the computer so we're going to copy this folder into here and replace it all right so we're done with that now we don't need the usb stick to boot the computer so let's go in here, double click, double click on Clover, right click on config.plist and click open with Clover Configurator. Now, just want you to go over here to where it says boot and let's just, right here, the minus V, you can just highlight this line and click this minus. Now, if you don't want to see anything and you just want the computer to boot right here to one, and then up here, go ahead and type in the name of your hard drive. Mine is Nook 8. Okay. Now, let's go over here to the SM BIOS and let's change some serial numbers. All right. Let me close this out. And we've got this little cute program that we downloaded. We'll just open this up and click on gen smbios.command. All right, and then press number three. And then this is what our computer is. It's asking us what model of Mac do we have? So we're gonna type in Mac mini eight comma one. And it's gonna generate our serial number, our board serial and our UUID. So right here, board serial number. So let's just copy this. Make sure you don't have any spaces, okay? And just highlight it all and copy it into there. And then the serial number, which is right here. Copy. 
And that goes into here. Paste it, enter, and the UUID right there. Copy that one and put it into here. Boom, that's it. Now, don't forget to save it right here or that work you just did won't even take effect. All right, so that's it, guys. Quit Clover, and then I'm gonna show you when it boots up what it looks like. Restart. Okay, coming back up. And there it goes. So it just shows that screen for a split second, and uh, but everything's automatic. We don't see any more text. So when your wife looks at the computer, she's going to say, well, my gosh, where did we get a Mac? All right, guys. Now, before we leave, let's get into some benchmarks. See how this thing performs. I'm going to go ahead and run Geekbench. And let's see where we are. Now, this is no screaming computer, but you know what? It's certainly not that bad. And uh, we're going to do Logic Pro X on this because wouldn't this be nice? You take this thing, this little computer, put it in your back pocket and uh, or in your jacket. If your pockets are very big, maybe it'll fit. <laughs> put it in your jacket and go to the studio, hook it up to a monitor, and there you go. So uh, let's see what this... Geekbench 5 comes out to be. All right, guys, coming down to the end here. This thing's got a little fan in it. I don't know if you can hear it. Can you hear that little fan? Sounds like a laptop. So cute. All right, we're coming down to the end here. Let's see where we are on this little puppy. Oh, we got a 940 single score, not bad at all, 41. 04 on a multi. Let's see what that compares to. Let's go to the Mac chart. So, like I said, we got 940. So let's go down here to 940. Nine. Okay, 946 is an iMac from late 2015, an i7. Wow, this is only an i5. So i7, 3.3 gigahertz. It's about equal to that. That is an awesome score. Now, let's go back. We said 4104 on a multi. Let's see where we are here. 4104. So, let's see. We're between these two. Look at this. A MacBook Pro 2019 i7 processor. Uh, I'm really impressed. I hadn't run this score yet, so I'm impressed. Uh, it's right in between this 2019 MacBook Pro i7 and the exact same processor on a 2018. So it's the same processor. That's pretty impressive. That is pretty impressive. All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and do Cine, Cinebench just for the heck of it because we just need to know. Now, you're not going to be video editing on this machine, of course, but... Uh, Let's just see where we are compared to maybe what you have at home right now. Okay, guys, coming down to the end on this one. And uh, let's see if we can beat my previous score. Oh, yeah. Uh, how is 1780? That's really remarkable. Uh, that is directly under an i7 7900K above an i7-6700. Very impressive, I must say. This is an i5-8259U. It only has a clock speed of 2.3, but it does have four cores and eight threads. So this, this really is really amazing. Now they make this in an i7 version too. So if you really needed more power and you wanted to say this small, you could get one. But let's move on. Let's move on. I'm going to plug in my, I've got one of those little uh, Focusrite audio interfaces, just a USB one. I'm gonna plug it in and we're gonna run Logic Pro X. 
Now, this is that Logic Pro benchmark test that you can run up to 128 tracks. And what's on each track? I'm going to show you. On each track, you've got, I've got right here, an electric piano. I've got channel EQ, a multiplier, a chorus, an auto filter, a plate reverb, and a limiter on the stereo bus. Now, let's go ahead and go up here. But first, wait a minute. Let's show the load meters. Okay? So I'm going to put these, I'll put them right here, guys. I'll put them right here. Now, here's all our cores and threads. So let's go back and uh, let's try like uh, what? 20 tracks. Would that be reasonable? Uh, 19 and 20. All right, let's see. Oh, let's check our audio interface buffer settings. I've got set to 64. We'll leave it there at 64. I've got processing threads, 8, okay, and medium process buffer. All right, let's hit it. Okay, so... I'm running pretty high on these four cores, but I've got all these other cores that are, you know, they're not pegging anywhere near that. And I'm on 20 tracks right now, guys, running a virtual instrument on every track. Nothing is bounced, okay? All right, let's, let's crank it up. Let's go to, uh, what do you say? Let's go, let's just go to 30 tracks. Ooh, 30 tracks? Now, 28 tracks. How's 28 tracks sound for most of you guys? Okay, so we got these four cores just pegged, but I've got no problems running it. I've got no overload messages. Everything is uh, smooth. There's no glitching. Let's take it up a notch. Let's crank it on up. Can we get to 32 tracks? All right, got 32 tracks on. Let's go. Ooh, we're still hanging in there. Um, now, if you remember, I don't know if you watched my other video about the i9-9900K. We were able to get 128 tracks to run on this without any issues. But we're still, this is an i5, guys, that you can put in your jacket. Um, we're still at 32 tracks. Nothing has bounced, and we're still at... 64 buffers, all right? Oh, can we get to 36 tracks? Let's see if we can. I pegged my four, but I've still got a little juice left here. Amazing, amazing. Let's just crank it up. Let's go to 40 tracks. Back it up. Make sure we hit the same stuff. 40 tracks with virtual instruments. Nothing is bust, so these are on every track. Normally, you guys, of course, you would bust, you would bust all these effects, but that's amazing. Now, the fan started spinning. I don't know if you could hear that or not, but it started spinning. But look here. I've still got a little bit of uh, room. Uh, 50 tracks. I haven't done this test with this yet, so I have no idea. All right, 64 buffers. No, no, no. Okay, let's crank it down. Let's go to 1024 on the buffer, see if that helps us. Okay, applying it. I don't think so, let's try it. No, she won't go. She won't go 50 tracks. Let's crank it down to 48 tracks. Nope. Nope. So what is our max? 46 tracks? Nope. Maybe we were there before. Here is 44 tracks running. There we go. Nope. <laughs> No, okay, 40, all right, let's say 42 is the number. 
What do you think? Is 42 the number? No. Gosh, I guess 40 was it. Here's 41. Nope. 40 tracks. Nope. What's the problem? I thought we had 40 tracks on before. Okay, let me change the buffer spec to 64. Did we have better success at 64? Okay, let's hit it back. We're running 39 tracks. Oh my God. With buffers at 64, it runs better? Let me, let me just, I'm sorry this is taking so long, but 40 tracks. Okay, 41, 42 tracks. 64 buffers, and we're doing better than 1024. Unbelievable. 44 tracks, guys. Okay, all right. So there we go. 42, 42 virtual instruments with all of these processes on every single track and a limiter on the stereo bus and 42 tracks. So there we go. Not bad at all. 42 tracks running Logic. That's pretty impressive. Now, you're gonna jump all over me because you wanna see the video editing I don't think that we should even try video editing on this for anything serious. For my little videos, it'd probably be fine. But, um, and rendering, I'm sure would be fine. But uh, this is Intel. This is a nice little unit, guys. And uh, I'm, I'm really impressed. I'm really impressed. The only thing I wish I could have got working was the onboard audio. Because right now, if I don't use this audio interface, I have no sound except through HDMI. So, depending on what you're using it for, it might be just fine with you. But there you go. I hope you enjoyed this. Please like and subscribe. And uh, 